Okay, developers, welcome back. Now today we're gonna to do a little bit of investigative work on someone's Ethereum address. We're gonna see what their balance was between two dates and we're gonna see just how many transactions they made last year. Now today's video is brought to you by Consensus Software Inc. and they have just dropped Infura's archive node add-on from 250 a month to free. So obviously we're gonna have a look at how it works and see what data we can dig up from the past. If you're new here, I'm Calvin Tara, and on Eat the Blocks, we help Web2 developers transition into Web3. So for us to get data from a block that is older than the most recent 128 blocks, we need archive node access. Now full nodes on Ethereum don't include the complete state from each verification. This allows them to minimize storage and computation cost. Archive nodes store terabytes of historic data, which allows us to query anything we want from any point in time. I've recently read that an Ethereum archive node can be over 15 terabytes in size and take around six months to fully sync. With archive node access, we can get info on account balances, smart contract codes, transaction counts, token supply, token price, and more. There are several methods that are available within Fura's Ethereum JSON RPC and WebSocket API that require archive node access. These methods come with an extra parameter so we can specify a block number with our request. We have ETH get balance, which returns the balance of the account of the given address. We also have get code, which returns the compiled smart contract code. We also have get transaction count, which gives us the number of transactions sent from a specific address. Then we have get storage at, and this returns the value from a storage position at a given address and then call. This executes a new message call immediately without creating a transaction on the blockchain. In terms of use cases, we see sites like Etherscan and June Analytics use archive nodes to give us visibility into blockchain transactions. But for us, the most common use case might be checking the balance information for an address. Maybe it's a wallet or maybe it's a contract. We could also call smart contract functions to read that data related to tokens or NFTs. A decentralized exchange may need this data to check a wallet's balance of a certain token. Games that incorporate tokens may need this data related to a user's wallet balance or even an NFT marketplace. Or maybe we're doing a security audit of a recent failure and we need to figure out what made a contract fail at a certain point in time. And then we have big data. Now big data was the promise of the web two world, but I think we can agree that we've been betrayed by big tech in the way in which that data was extracted and used without our permission. In a web three world, all of this data made available by blockchain technology and archive node data will allow us to better understand the decentralized economy. So let's have a look at how we can get up and running with the free archive node access from Infura. First, obviously we'll need to get an account with Infura. Then once we're logged in, we can head over to the dashboard and create a new Ethereum project. From here, we'll grab our mainnet API endpoints and that's all we need to get started. I think the fastest way to show this in action is to use Node.js. And once we're done, you can extrapolate this information into the front end of your choice. But for now, let's just get the data. We'll do a quick test to go back in time and compare someone's wallet balance between the beginning and the end of 2021. We'll also check the number of transactions that were made in that time. Obviously this data is much older than the last 128 blocks, so it's perfect for archive node access. We'll start a new project with npm init-y and then we'll create an index.js file. We'll pull in ethers and place our project ID that is at the end of our endpoint in a variable. We'll then create an Infura provider using ethers and pass in our Infura project ID here. Next, we'll set up an async function and use a random address that we know has lots of crypto. You can use yours also if you have the data to pull from years prior. We'll choose a start and end block for the year of 2021. Then we'll start grabbing the data. We'll start by getting the user's current balance, which doesn't require archive node access. We can use the get balance method on ethers, which allows us to make a request to Infura's get balance method. By default, it's going to grab the latest block. Ethers also has get code, get transaction count, and get storage, so we can interact through Infura. 
We'll pass in the user address that we have saved and on that promise, we'll get back a big number. We'll convert that into a more human readable number using format ether. If we run this, we'll see that the user has a lot of crypto. We will do the same for the starting balance from the beginning of last year. Only this time, we'll pass in the block number that we want to query. This is where we do need archive node access. Then we'll get the balance for the end of the year using the block number we have for the end of 2021. Now exactly the same for the number of transactions using get transaction count, passing in the user address and start block. Then we'll get the end block. Now we just need to subtract the end balance from the starting balance to figure out the difference and the same with transaction count. We'll simply log these out to the console to make sure that we're able to get this data and call the main function. Then if we run this file, voila, we have data from the present and the past. This is just a simple example to show you what we can do and the possibilities that I know that you're going to come up with will be endless. So we'll leave a link in the description below so that you can dig more into this new free feature. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll speak to you soon.